Let's look at recording a simple audio track. The first thing we need to do is create an audio track and we can use the plus button or right click here or go under the track menu just like we could for the instruments or use T. And here I'm gonna name it Shaker. I'm gonna record a live shaker and I've already done that before the video started. And the type of track is gonna be an audio track instead of an instrument track. I'm just gonna create one and I'll color it a different color for now. It's gonna be a mono track since I'm gonna record with just one mic. And I'm not using any presets. We're not gonna talk about that. This is a basics series, it's for later. And for the input, I can select the input for my audio interface and I'm gonna use the left input. I'm gonna to output to the main output in my audio interface. So let's hit okay, and there's my new recording track. So here I've got the inspector open and we can see the different properties and settings related to this. And let's just refresh our memory. F4 will open or close the inspector. So with this selected, we can see here that for the input, I have the left input or input one selected, but I can change it there. And if I hit F3 to open the console, we can see it here as well. Here are my instrument tracks, the Mai Tai for the bass and presence for this percussion. And then there's another Mai Tai from the beginning of this series when I created an additional one. If I want to get rid of it, I can select it and now click over here and go remove. So here I can set the input as well. I can click over here and switch it in this area as well. And I can set the output there. I'm going to leave it as is. Let's hit F3 to close that. I just wanted to show you that as well. So here's the track. I want to record arm it. I can hit the record button or I can hit R and that'll record enable it. And you're seeing it move now because this is the vocal mic I'm speaking into. We have input monitoring enabled as well. I can turn that off separately if I want. And it's a good idea to leave it on if you want to hear what you're playing as you're recording it. In my case, I don't need that. I'm going to just play it with the headphone mix of the other instruments. Now I have a couple of selections to make here. Let me take this out of record mode for the moment. I can choose for tempo, follow, don't follow, or time stretch. Now if it's in don't follow mode, that means if the tempo of the song has changed, the audio is just gonna remain as is. In follow mode, if there are tempo changes, the start position of the audio will remain in sync with the bar and beat position, but the length won't be affected. Whereas when we're in time stretch mode, the start of the event will remain in sync, plus the length will be stretched or compressed to match the tempo change. And then if there is time stretching involved, like if we're going to quantize the audio, we have different algorithms. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to record enable the track. And again, not input monitor it. Now it's important to set the level of the input from your audio interface. So let me just check it. All right, that's fine. So I'm going to hit record and lay down the shaker part. All right, and I hit stop and the recording went on a bit longer. We'll need to trim that and we'll look at that in another video. Let's take this out of record enable mode and listen back. All right, it's not bad. I'm going to hit the S button here to solo it and hear it with the click. So my playing's a bit sloppy. Let's say I want to quantize it. I can correct the timing just like I did with the MIDI. With it selected, I have my quantize value set here to 16th notes. So I'm going to hit apply. And there it's analyzed it for transients and put markers in and stretched and compressed where it needed so that it'll conform to the grid more evenly. Let's listen to that. And that works fine. And without the metronome, well, here it's a nice smooth time stretching algorithm. I'll see you for more in the next video.